again everyone um we're going to be discussing a bit uh what the company has been doing with lignin over the past four years uh so this is actually this picture uh here is actually our r d center uh it's it just turned three years old um this weekend uh, and we are very proud of this of this building and everything that we have accomplished uh on the r d at, at the company so just um, speaking about what we do actually at the R&D uh, center to those who don't know the, the company that well, uh, we have basically four, five development routes um, uh, within uh, our R&D center. It, so it starts from uh, forest to the end product. So the, the first one is definitely wood quality. Um, you, you know, Brazil is quite, um, um, competitive when we speak about uh, the forest resources. Uh, I mean, we grow trees very, uh, very fast and then, but there's a lot of technology within it. Um, then of course, uh, after the, the, the forest resources, we do everything there since like forest breeding to ecophysiology and, and, and so on. Uh, but then when we come to uh, the industrial part, we have two uh, the main routes. It's within pulp development and then paper, paper packaging. Uh, I'm going to speak about the company a bit, uh, a bit further on. Uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, and I would say that involves a lot of different areas. Uh, when we speak about bio-based barriers, this is something that uh, the company has put as priorities here, you know, how, how we can make paper packaging um, uh, close to other types of packaging like plastics. So this is quite in, uh, important for us. Then the new technology from Forestry Resources where uh, me and Bruno uh, we lay on. Uh, this is where we have the lignin um, research and also uh, nanocellulose. We also have a pilot plant for MFC production uh, at the same place where the lignin extraction is. But of course, the company uh, invests a lot in environment and sustainability. Uh, this is actually part of the, the core of the company uh, to you know, make more of the forest, but we also have to keep uh, the native forest um, um, uh, saved um, like, like that. Uh, so we have been quite, um, I would say, quite new in the company. The company is 120 years old, but the R&D as it is on a corporate level uh, is like six, seven years old. Uh, but the company has put a lot of money on it uh, over the past uh, five years. Uh, it's around uh, 50, 65 million uh, dollars investment um, in, in R&D. So it was quite, um, um, uh, interesting money from from a company that is um, quite. Uh, so what the company is? Uh, so we are the leading packaging board company in Brazil. So we actually um, uh, support the market in Brazil, but we also export a lot of paper to to other countries. Uh, this is one thing that is quite differential in in. Brazil, we have, uh, I, I, I don't know if you guys can actually see my, uh, my, my arrow here, but uh, we see a lot of companies in Brazil, they, they are basically, um, they, they have basically eucalyptus forests, but we also have pine forests. They're actually higher than, than, uh, than eucalyptus uh, in, in our company. Uh, with that, with those forests, we have like a fiber-based, um, business so we um, put in, put on the market short fiber from eucalyptus and long fiber from from uh, pine uh, there's just one thing that is quite interesting the fluff pulp market uh, we used to uh, you know uh, import a lot of this fluff pulp for diapers and, and so on but now we uh, we, we put this uh, fiber in the market this is quite interesting and, and quite new business for the company it's like almost five years like four years old, more or less, uh, where this uh, meal was actually started up. But then the main business is still paper. Um, so we produce a lot of cardboard, like um, 
one of our biggest clients in, in Brazil and actually outside Brazil is Tetra Pak. So we have those, you know, those um, LPB uh, packaging and so on. But we also do a lot of craft liner and set craft where they are, uh, where they go for corrugated board boards and also industrial bags. We also have this conversion um, uh, facilities. So we, we actually produce uh, boxes um, for, from corrugated board. So with this, I mean, uh, I, I guess you understand that we have a lot of different products. And, and of course, these different products, they can only be made from different fibers. So when we speak about what we have, like the, the quite different uh, from other, other companies in Brazil and even in the world, we have eucalyptus forest based and pine, but we also have some mixed uh, fibers uh, depending on the product. So when we mix these guys, especially these fibers, um, we can get the most out of the final product. Uh, we can achieve that, of course, with different processes. Uh, so we have like low kappa number. I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the term, but we have low kappa number, high kappa number, uh, and different, um, specifically di different craft uh, processes, uh, especially when we talk about parameters. Uh, besides that, we also have different meals. So uh, we do not have like uh, all products in all meals. Some meals, they are quite uh, specific to each type of product. We have around 20 meals in, in Brazil uh, with the recycling business um, uh, attached. So when we think about lignin, spe specifically craft lignin from, from black liquor, we have eucalyptus, which is a hardwood resource. We have pine, which is a softwood resource. And then we have mixed pulping where we, we put on a nice ratio between eucalyptus and pine, we, we, we cook actually eucalyptus and pine together. Uh, with this um, um, mix of different resources and different processes, we definitely believe uh, we have different lignins. So this is where we actually started uh, four years ago. Uh, that was the challenge, you know, when you have just uh, a market pulp from eucalyptus business, uh, you usually have one forest resource and one process only. So, I mean, I would say that you would have like one lignin specifically um, uh, speaking, uh, or one type of lignin that is like modified during the craft uh, process, uh, during the craft pulp. But this was the main challenge with, uh, uh, with Inglobin. Um, do we have like one type of lignin where we could have some lignins? This is actually where we started doing some like uh, very small lab scale and um, lots of extraction and lots of characterization. Uh, and we came actually to this picture. I really love this picture when I when I had to 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 know this picture was for another another symposium. But uh, I I always keep this picture um, in in my presentations because it shows um, uh, how. Um, differ, differentiate, uh, I mean, uh, how clubbing is, is quite different in, in this market. So I would say that this A, B, and C uh, letters, they come from different meals with different processes, and, and you see that we can actually have uh, eucalyptus and pine lignin. Uh, what we have been focusing on now is on pine lignin due to some uh, internal reasons. But we also have this arsenal of, of different lignins um, in, in store. Uh, what we have been developing in, in early stages, um, I would say uh, this is one thing that I'm going to uh, comment a bit on the challenge uh, slide. But uh, how can we characterize but in a fast way? Um, uh, so we developed, uh, this is actually published. If anybody wants, uh, I can send you this. It, it was a uh, conference paper, but we developed some internal characterization quite fast way based on uh, FTRR. Uh, we know that it's more like qualitative, but still it's interesting to understand what we have on our hands. So with that, we saw that, um, you know, if we think about, for example, pine in, pine C, uh, they, they come from the same forest base and this 
uh, mu C and mu A, they are quite close when uh, their the process is quite similar. So we definitely thought uh, and we see that the, um, uh, the you know the characteristic would be uh, quite similar as well. But we have like for example uh, the fine uh, lignin that comes from uh, mu B, they are a bit more uh, different than than the other one which was the, actually the darkest one you could see on the, um, on the previous slide. So with all this work uh, we did in the past, like uh, we finalized around 2017, uh, the company understood that uh, this would be definitely a great market and a challenging market. Uh, you guys are here because uh, you know the lignin is quite, quite a challenging uh, macromolecule. But the, the company definitely decided to invest uh, on, on, on bigger scales. So when we were trying to develop the market, we saw that some tests would definitely need like 300 kilos or one ton. And we have the, the capability of producing just one kilo per, per day uh, in the lab. Then um, the company decided definitely to invest uh, on the lignin pilot plant. So this picture on the background is actually from our pilot plant facility. On the left, we have the, the lignin boost access, which I'm going to comment a bit more. And on the right, this is a microfibrillated cellulose um, uh, pilot plant. Uh, this is a bit of the timeline. So what I mentioned uh, earlier, um, it started in 2016, the first studies of prep ligand. So we were extracting like 50 grams on, on lab scale. But already one year later, uh, the company saw that that would be a very um, uh, future, future business. And we started studying how, how can we grow uh, our production and which can be the best technology that can, uh, that can do it. So we had a lot of different talks with different uh, technology suppliers. Uh, we, and then we had to, to come to a very detailed and, and um, disciplined way of uh, evaluating these technologies. So we, we basically uh, created um, uh, like a spreadsheet where we could like put some uh, a score like a scorecard and then we actually told the company maybe uh, this is the ranking of the technologies uh, that we, we think that uh, are best suitable for this kind of of, um, of, of business and then in August of 2018 we got the investment approval from the company it was around 32 million reais at the time this includes the microfibrillated cellulose uh, plant as well then last year, finally in November, after like six, seven uh, months of, of project, we got the startup of the Lignin Boost Success. Uh, the founding team was actually here, uh, three people, and the, the startup ran quite smooth. And then January uh, 2020, this year, we got the performance test done. Uh, everything was okay. We actually even had like more production than than. Uh, the nominal capacity of the of the plant was. So this is actually the picture. Uh, the, there's a sign here uh, mentioning Valmi put the sign there that it was the first plant um, in South America. So this lignin powder plant has a um, uh, capacity of one ton per batch. Uh, so we we actually uh, have just one filter. Uh, there was no uh, no reason to have two filters like uh, industrial scale is. So we run the alkaline stage and the, and the acidic stage on, on different days. Uh, the plant is quite flexible, so this is not attached to any evaporation. We have like a receiving tank where we can bring black liquor from basically all craft pulp producing meals we have in the company. Uh, this is what makes actually quite a uh, differentiator when, when we think about uh, clubbing because as I mentioned we have different processes, different meals, and different uh, feedstocks. Uh, the main uh, aim is definitely to reach for external customers but we also have some internal uh, application projects going on. 
And uh, I kind of highlighted the partnership because we definitely believe partnership is key to bringing craft lignin to the market. Uh, we see a lot of lignin products uh, already in the market, but craft lignin has been, uh, I would say, quite a young market and, and partnership like bringing um, the end customer to um, what we do is definitely um, a success factor for, for this product. Um, these are some of the pictures we, we got from the startup. This, I, I love this picture actually, uh, I took it. This was the first, this is um, a sampling device. This was actually the first time we saw lignin being precipitated our pilot, at our pilot plant. So it was quite, you know, uh, exciting. And we were quite happy to see that everything was actually working at, at, that, uh, at that time. And this is a picture of the first production. Uh, so the, the first production was on the 13th of November of last year. So we've got the alkaline um, uh, lignin and this is our uh, acidic lignin, which is quite bright and we are quite um, uh, proud of, of, what we, of what we have achieved uh, there. Uh, we also uh, kind of created a uh, pilot plant flyer. Uh, this is quite interesting. You know, we, we got contacts from different people and we saw like, how can we have, you know, not non-confidential information in just one, um, just one page. And this is more or less uh, what we use when we are reached by uh, possible customers or, or clients. So coming to the challenge, what we, we think, uh, you know, we come from a paper, a pulp and paper business with uh, all the specificities that the, the business have. Uh, has uh, and, and we believe some of these challenges challenges will definitely um, make it easier to what we believe this will be a, a great business. So definitely cost effective process. I mean, uh, everybody always looks for uh, looks for that. So there's no there's no point in like uh, saying too much here. But uh, what I definitely believe. Um, it would be easier and, and um, you know, to convince leadership and, and so on is bringing uh, familiar processes. Uh, so everybody here is quite um, familiar to craft uh, open process, uh, which has, I would say, low temperatures comparing to, for example, um, catalysis, uh, catalytical process and so on. So bringing this to the language uh, that, um, that the, the company leadership and also the, the operational leadership, they understand better, then that would definitely be um, uh, um, more interesting to, to, to the people like ecosystems and also like low um, uh, temperature uh, process and, and et cetera. Something close to their, their reality. That, that's definitely easier for us to convince them to put like industrial scale and and, and how to and, and valorize lignin even, even more. But when we come to technical challenges, um, we know here that um, uh, lignin, depending on the application, uh, it's quite um, uh, low reactivity and compatibility. When we think about materials, I, I think definitely uh, increasing compatibility of lignin is, is gonna be a key for, for future applications. And, um, I would definitely believe that one-to-one -one replacement of fossil-based uh, raw material can definitely be achieved uh, with lignin. Going further, this is not an order of, of importance, it's just an order of, of the size of the, of the sentence, but reactivity is definitely a key challenge. Uh, I guess everybody discussed that in any, pro in, in any project that has been going on, I, and I definitely think that at Liberate, you guys do, do the same. Uh, sulfur is still one challenging uh, point um, for some applications, for, for others, there's no, no big deal. But we definitely believe that um, uh, ways of reducing or even, you know, not having sulfur uh, in the craft lignin will, um, will be a great um, uh, increase in what we can do with the with it. And 
and to finalize uh, some physical and optical properties, the color of lignin is a bit challenging as well. So this uh, this, this pen actually has um, just 10% uh, of lignin, and uh, it's it's just dark. So uh, ways of uh, uh, overcoming color and, and odor uh, will be very well uh, very welcome uh, within the, the paper industry. Especially the odor, I mean, the, the craft lignin has this different odor. Some like, I mean, I, I don't have any issue with that, but some some uh, markets will definitely um, be better if the lignin has, uh, I mean, low odor or no odor at all. Okay, so with that, I will leave this slide for, for 30 seconds. This is actually the, the clubbing aspiration. I guess you guys can read it. So what, what we definitely want is to change society. You know, we would like to offer renewable, recycling, biodegradable, forest-based products. We also have a very wide uh, portfolio, but we want more, okay? So we want to have more from, from the forest. And then um, we definitely want to, to um, inspire the future and, and, and uh, and give value to, to everybody that is linked with clubbing. Okay, so with that, I finalized my presentation. Um, I, I don't know if I uh, went over time, but this is the, um, our contact. So if you guys please want to know more, or if you guys uh, think that clubbing could be a, a great partner for any project or for any develop, development, this is how, how you can reach us. Thank you, Marcel.